And we're going to talk now to Inaya following Iman, founder of the Equiano Project, which is basically set up, I think I'm right in saying Inaya, uh, in order to kind of get people to better understand uh, what's going on in this country when it comes to racial division. Very good morning to you. Morning and thank you for having me. Um, that's a very good description of what the Equiano Project is. Basically, um, it is a, a forum, an ideas forum to kind of fundamentally move the conversation forward when it comes to issues of race, culture and politics in this country. For a number of years, we've had kind of divisive identity politics. We've had we've had a climate of fear when it comes to speaking openly and honestly about race issues and we've had a very lack of meaningful solutions that address many of the kind of issues related to race and um, that exist in britain so we are bringing together challenging thinkers intellectuals and ordinary people in, in the uk but hopefully also internationally to kind of think creatively and imaginatively on this issue so our first event is tomorrow it's really exciting it's titled is it time to forge a new narrative on race we have the you know uh, amazing kind of writer and broadcaster trevor phillips uh, the head teacher of um, the michaela school catherine babel saying many many and um, other amazing guests to kind of really move the conversation forward forward on race in this country. Yeah, because we seem to have kind of travelled down a very dark road uh, in recent weeks and months because of the uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, because of the way that the world has kind of reacted to the death of a, of a man in Minneapolis. I mean, it's almost hard to believe how long ago that was. Um, do you think there are people in this conversation who are attempting to be deliberately divisive for some end, which we, which we don't know? Yeah, I, I really do think um, there is. I think now, unfortunately, there's a lot of people and groups that have a vested interest in creating um, division and stoking racial division in this country. I mean, over the weekend, we saw uh, a kind of pseudo black militia yeah. in, in Brixton. So we are seeing a, a huge escalation of, of kind of racial division in this country just at a time when we've made leaps and bounds when it comes to, you know, anti-racism in Britain. And, and now when we are really forging a kind of positive um, vision for uh, Britain when it comes to our multi-ethnic society, we're seeing a lot of groups emerging trying to actually roll the clock back. And it's really time that we were much more forthright in pushing back against it. Yes, exactly right. And I mean, there are plenty of people, of course, who are straight into the the middle of all of this racial division stuff uh, who are not from any ethnic community who are in fact white people um, who are telling black people how oppressed they are yeah this is something that um, I, I get a lot because I'm you know, proud to be British because I'm very um, happy here and and support freedom of speech and, and defend the institutions of this country and don't believe whatsoever that Britain is a racist society. Uh, I'm frequently told that, you know, I should feel oppressed, I should feel like a victim. And I think that that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, there is so much to be proud of here. Um, there's so much to be grateful for, um, for, for all races, not just, you know, ethnic minority people. And I think that's the kind of positive vision, forward facing vision for the country that we need. And that's the kind of um, vision that the Equiano project is going to be um, promoting. Yes. And what part do you think like schools can play and educationalists can play in this because I think for a lot of the problems that we see in our society now they are kind of set up because of what is being taught in our schools and I think there's something that could be fixed about that. Yeah, so what we've actually seen um, develop in recent years is a kind of emergence of a kind of race-based education. We've seen a, a recent uh, initiative by Liberal Democrats and other people to um, impose a black curriculum. So we're not actually teaching, you know, Britain as a whole or considering, you know, black black Britons to be part of a wider British narrative. It's everything now in school is increasingly divided by race. And I don't think that um, that is helpful. I actually find that deeply counterproductive. It is a big contrast to the vision of Martin Luther King, which I believe in, which is judging by the content of your character, mm. not the color of your skin. I think that's what we need to be teaching young kids and, and young children growing up, that actually it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin are. You know, we, we care about um, how you treat people in society and that's positive not this kind of very race-based narrative that is increasingly being pushed against so we are you know hopefully again trying to represent a whole different constituency 
of people that yeah. are against this kind of very divisive narrative that's being pushed forward. Yeah, because also an awful lot of what we're seeing is is what you might regard as kind of tokenism, like all these people taking the knee um, as if that is in some way helping people who might be underprivileged or helping people who might be undereducated. You know, it doesn't really do anything, does it, other than show you to be a virtue signalling person who agrees with, you know, diversity. I completely agree. It's really ridiculous. I mean, we've had thousands and thousands of people protest. There was so much energy and a lot of people claim that this was going to be a very pinnacle moment to bring about meaningful change. But actually, we have seen not a single policy, not a single political program or announcement that has been pushed forward from many of the leaders of this movement that will improve the material life of anyone in this country, not necessarily just black people. I mean, at least, you know, we're very thankful that we're not in as bad out of a situation as America when they've got, you know, trying to overthrow capitalism and defunding the police and, and many of the destructive things that are going on in America. But again, so that same narrative is quite similar here, where you don't have to actually do anything meaningful. You don't have to do the often long and arduous work of actually finding out meaningful solutions. All you have to do is basically put a black square on your Instagram, take the knee, and, it, and it's all about virtue signaling. Mm. I don't think that helps anyone. I I actually think again it is actually very very counterproductive and, and distracts attention from many of the people that are doing great work to help um you know kids facing injustice regardless of their ethnic background hmm. and also it's very arrogant it seems to me uh, for anyone to say for example and we've had other other guests from black and ethnic minority backgrounds who say this you can't just say that everybody who happens to have a different color skin thinks the same way you know there are black people uh, who have a heritage from africa there are black people who have a heritage from the caribbean you know they don't all agree on everything uh, in the same way that people from the indian subcontinent have completely different regions of of of, uh, of politi politics that they think about you know somebody who's originally from bangladesh may have a very different view of the world than somebody from sri lanka you know but it's kind of insulting it seems to me to say that uh, you know black lives matter because everybody's the same I know it's very interesting. We hear so much about diversity, but the one element of diversity that we don't hear about is ideological or intellectual diversity. If you are a white person, you must be privileged. You must, you know, be yeah. rich and, and, and you know have a very specific view. And if you're a black person, you must think you're a victim. You must be very, you know, depressed and down about your life and feel downtrodden. I mean, this is incredibly divisive stuff. This is a very kind of one-dimensional essentialist view view of human beings we all have different experiences we all have different backgrounds but essentially we are all human and i really believe that what unites us is far 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 stronger than what divides us and yes we can respect difference we can honor difference and we can appreciate it but ultimately we are all humans and i think that many of the difficulties facing different groups are actually you know very similar across races and again you know the equino project wants to champion um this new this better and far more inclusive narrative than this um, narrative of division that we have heard for a number of years now but particularly in the last few months tremendous uh, thing to say and i thank you very much indeed i've got uh, i've retweeted your tweet but tell people just if they need to uh, watch what you're doing later on how do they do that Yes, if you would like to attend this event tomorrow, it's fantastic at um, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Please um, find the Equiano Project on Twitter at the Equiano Project or the Equianoproject.com and you will be able to get tickets to it. It's free and uh, we want to bring as many people on this conversation um, to move this conversation um, far forward. Great. Inaya, thank you very much indeed. Inaya Fuller and Iman uh, will be talking to her, I'm sure, much more over the course of the next few weeks and months, founder of the Equiano Project, another sensible voice uh, to be welcomed in to the Independent Republic of Mike Gray.